Well, hello, that's me again. Today is 19th of November. It's Saturday and uh, as you might expect, I wouldn't let you have nice undisturbed weekend. But let's not procrastinate and let's get to our goals, so to speak. And we'll start with this. Um, don't be surprised why I'm showing it to you. I will explain. So uh, there is a, uh, basically, well, it's brain disorder, face blindness or so-called prosopagnosia. Don't mix it with uh, or mistake it for German Moisia or whatever the name was in, the, in Immortal David Lynch's uh, Twin Peaks. But it is a brain disorder. It is characterized by the inability to recognize or differentiate faces. People with face blindness may struggle to notice differences in faces of strangers. Others may even have a hard time recognizing familiar faces. It is estimated to affect about 2% of the general population. And the symptoms, it uh, basically exp it explains the symptoms of this um, prosopagnosia. It may be extremely difficult for people with face blindness to identify a person who shows up in a different setting or context that one uh, they, uh, they are used to. So why is it important? Why did I introduce it to, uh, to you, this type of the brain? Uh, uh, it's not mental uh, issue, it's brain issue. I mean, people could be absolutely normal having this uh, illness, which is really tragic, really. But uh, the reason is uh, very simple. Uh, facts are faces, actually. When you look at the facts, you either recognize the fact as a fact and you treat it as such. That means recognition. So, and uh, when we talk about this phase blindness or blindness to facts, uh, modern United States or Western uh, elites, and especially its intel, especially high level of intel uh, and strategic intelligence uh, people, they definitely have the acute issue of those, you know, phase blindness. They don't recognize facts. I had a discussion, including my very good friend uh, Byron King, who is a former uh, professional naval officer, high, 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 fairly high rank, and we say that, yeah, you know what, there is an issue with the strategic uh, intelligence in the United States. They simply uh, do not recognize things. <laughs> and point is uh, well taken because basically uh, professionals of the middle level who actually do the, their due diligence, they understand things. They do recognize facts. They try to play with them in terms of putting together some kind of their uh, reporting and uh, advisories to higher levels. But once it goes to that uh, level, above the uh, middle or high middle level everything collapses completely and we have the situation when you basically what we have today why do I bring this up here is very simple I didn't go to the New York Times I simply lay I'm simply lazy and I, I really don't care about it anymore I just don't want to touch the sewer honestly but here it is SIT reports and it reports on the New York Times uh, two days ago or yesterday it doesn't matter so, some piece where United, uh, New York Times suddenly begins to scratch its head and ask that uh, NYT suggest why Russia still has missiles. And here what basically is a, a, a kind of summary of, of it. Tuesday strike, which the Times described as the biggest aerial attack of the conflict so far, featuring 96 missiles and the article was them raises question about how much Russia arsenal may be depleted and whether Moscow uh, will endure by, uh, by finding alternative sources of weapons. One explanation comes from the Pentagon which had claimed that Russia was running out of missiles as early as May. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin on Wednesday uh, 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 said on Wednesday that Russia was reaching out to Iran and North Korea to replenish its ammunition stocks, though the Pentagon itself has publicly said otherwise. Moscow, Tehran, and Pyongyang have all denied this, however. Meanwhile, the US has reportedly been trying to buy artillery ammunition for Kyiv from South Korea. Another possibility <laughs> relies on Ukrainian claims uh, from Thursday that Russia has used S-300 air defense missiles to strike ground targets. The uh, uh, unverified claims follow attempts by Kyiv to blame Moscow for S-300 that struck the Polish village of Prezhevodov on Tuesday and killed two civilians. 
and of course the famous uh, basically they are fraud now GNC used to be a respectable uh, organization not anymore it's a fraud and uh, so GNC a British intelligence firm tears your you know what contradiction Im immediately you know so two things do not come together British and, uh, uh, British and intelligence anymore said it believes Russia is actually building more missiles possibly using stockpiled microchips and other technology embargoed by the US and it's allied for years as I already stated, uh, when you talk about British intelligence and military organizations, uh, uh, intelligence and competence are not things which are compatible with them. And I don't think so. Even the middle level down, like it is in the United States, is capable to recognize what is going on. They have this issue of failure of recognition of facts as faces. So why I'm uh, putting this uh, thing uh, front, so to speak, today? Well, because my friend Larry Johnson, and he is again, don't forget, a CIA professional, former CIA professional. Look what he said. For the love of God, someone tell Putin he's out of precision missiles. And uh, so we hear uh, uh, quotes, obviously, with sarcasm, another guy who is uh, basically exhibit A of why the United States and where combined West knows shit about Russia, some Konstantin Sonin, the former uh, graduate of Moscow State University, he's a mathematician, uh, but that's about the uh, extent of his uh, STEM, so to speak, uh, education, because most of what he did after that was doing the economics stuff, and we know that basically economics and West are also things which do not really go together. So in other words, the guy is complete ignoramus. And if you want to know why some mathematicians are known for this, well, look at this, you know, look who, look <laughs> who what Paul Wolfowitz was. He had a degree in mathematics. Well, we know how it all turned out. So, and when you were quoting Konstantin Sonin, who actually works in the United States nat naturally and does absolutely fraudulent activity in terms of the, so to speak, economic research, you will have to understand the guy that doesn't know what the uh, basic clearance form is, how military industrial complex, how real economy operates, and especially so in Russia. But these are the people who are uh, basically advisors in the United States, and that is why the United States finds itself in the deep shit, pardon my French. Here's one of the reasons. So that's what he stated. Economic sanctions did, of course, have other immediate effects. Curbing Russia's access to microelectronics, chips, and semiconductors made uh, uh, production of cars and aircraft almost impossible. Well, how can I put it? Uh, the guy have no, pardon my French, clue what he is talking about, but that is expected from the type of those people. So, why did I bring this up? Here it is. Let's start with, uh, unlike Mr. Sonin, for example, uh, I do not speak on the issues of the uh, mathematics much, especially higher mathematics, but I certainly have some degree of the experience both in the serious manufacturing sector, apart from my military background, and you already, you already know my military background, is both in military science and na uh, naval engineering, serious engineering, which required, obviously, as you might have guessed it already, Form 1A and degree of the involvement with the military industrial complex of Soviet Union and Russia. My father, my late father, father, he was the guy who was de dealing with the communication systems of such things as Oscar II uh, <coughs> submarines or Delta III and Delta IV, just to name a few other things which uh, my family did. So, when I have the uh, basically uh, expertise, quote unquote, people like Sonin or uh, American media, most of which is basically trash, I already stated on many times, I'm beginning to smile and scratch my head. But why did I bring why did this microchip thing? Here it is. Let me show you uh, a few weeks ago this news. It's in Russian. I will translate it to you. And this is new Izvestia. Uh, uh, it's a fairly liberal leaning uh, uh, newspaper, but look at this. So this is the general director of the state-owned company, uh, 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 Space Communications. Alexei Volin started to talk about what Russia is doing right now, starting the production of Russian civilian. I am stressing it, civilian communication satellites, and here it is. The, I quote him. First, 
100% Russian satellite of communications and broadcasting already in the stage of production. The name of the, uh, this uh, satellite is Express AMU-4 and again it's a civilian aircraft. He uh, explained what happened. The, uh, initially, the, a lot of uh, the what is called the uh, functional load, so to speak, that means all this electronics was supposed to be done by Thales Alenia Space from Italy. Well, obviously, they have been removed, so to speak, uh, from this participation by the uh, sanctions regime. Well, guess what? The same as it was happened with other uh, branches, Russians just basically, you know, uh, started to produce their own electronics. And for those people who uh, want to know what, how it is happening in the military industrial complex, I have a news for you. Uh, Russian military industrial complex practically independent in this microchip production and supply from the West like almost completely. There are some things which are, which is called Priyomka acceptance with their uh, uh, tables one through nine, which tell you <clears throat> what, where you can use some of the Western components or Chinese components for that man, matter. And uh, the lowest level is one, highest nine. It's military and space grade of the chips. And let me put it this way. I am not professional in microchip uh, production. None. Don't you know, but I have enough background and I have enough, com uh, you know, uh, connections and communications with people, including at some point of time, people from the even the uh, Silicon Valley long time ago and people who I actually involved into this to say that, you know what, um, I'm a little bit getting tired listening to this. Oh, my God, two nanometers topology. Oh, my God, seven nanometers topology. Yes, sure. Russia cannot produce own, uh, for example, uh, a cell phone, advanced cell phone, and that is why Russians probably will continue to buy it for probably some time from uh, Xiaomi or whatever the name of the Chinese junk they make there. So, and China is not very active in sharing its own, uh, so to speak, electronic uh, um, expertise and manufacturing capabilities with Russia. But what many people uh, forget, Russia is the largest resource on earth of the rare earth uh, uh, metals and resources. It doesn't mean that she uh, extracts all of them, but she can, for example, and once she can, then, and that's what is happening right now, then things change completely. And as I already stated, many people do not understand when we talk about definite, uh, uh, you know, a lag of Russia behind, let's say, advanced uh, Western microchip technologies, Obviously, we're talking about about 20 years, or maybe 15, maybe more like that. And they don't understand that Russia still produce own indigenous 90 and 60 nanometers domestically uh, topology. And it's more than enough for Russian uh, military industrial complex. These are precisely the chips which go into the issues of avionics. For example, it's basically Pentium 4, guys. It's uh, dual core Pentium 4, which is 2006, 2007 uh, uh, type uh, topology. And they go into the uh, electronic brains of the cruise missiles. They go into the electronic brains of the signal processing. But you cannot explain this to people because they have no idea. And especially people who write this crap from NYT or such like this Mr. Zonin and other morons who have no clue and their expertise and range of their expertise is limited by their cell phones and all those applications and things which they love. I don't know. I buy cheapest cell phone all my life because I don't need all this crap. But what most people don't understand also, there is another branch of this, which is iSeq application specifically in integrated circuits. And Russia also provides itself completely with that. Now, <clears throat> you will say, oh my God, we kind of know this, but no guys, you evidently many don't, didn't. Many didn't recognize the fact that Russian military industrial complex is pretty much independent of that. And here is your latest news. <clears throat> As you know, as actually uh, two days ago, it's from Russia Zvezda TV, a very famous program. Many people watch their Zvezda military acceptance. And here is uh, one of the uh, uh, basically people who are involved into their uh, serious uh, uh, Russian microelectronics say that uh, uh, Russian microelectronics is not a need or 
as they say, the big problems of the small dimensions. And look what is uh, uh, highlighted in yellow. Russian Kinjals and Calibers missiles, they have their own smart head on their shoulders. And as you know, uh, Russian, uh, uh, Russian government accepted, obviously, under supervision of Mr. Mishustin and Mr. Putin and other people of this nature, Mon Monturov, and uh, the program of the development of Russian microelectronics through the 2030. Uh, do you know how much have been given uh, in terms of money to that? That's the other thing which many people do not understand because Russia is awash in cash. I mean, she and she actually is sovereign, uh, uh, basically, issuer of the Russian currency, the ruble. Well, the number uh, amount of money is even when you d directly uh, uh, translate it or convert it to the dollar, which is absolutely wrong, but still, it, it's a three trillion rubles, which roughly reaches the number of about 50 to 51 billion dollars. Just to give you an example, the ISML, ASML, the uh, uh, factory in Netherlands which produces the lithography uh, uh, technology, have been given by all international community because they are one, almost are uh, the uh, uh, basically monopolist. Uh, it was around 24 uh, billion dollars. Well, in Russia, 50, uh, 51 billion dollars go horrendous lengths, much more than even the equi equivalent number of dollars, uh, US dollars. And that's what many people don't understand. When you read this program, Russians are not, you know, basically uh, uh, aiming at those seven nanometers or whatever, four nanometers. No, 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 it's not about that. It's about production of also full spectrum of the lithography. By the way, for those who, people who do not know, Soviet Union was producing its own lithography technology, by the way, and was ranked third in microelectronics behind the United States and Japan, even in 1980s. It took, obviously, the scumbag like Gorbachev, Yeltsin, and those so-called America, Harvard, they're known as Harvard boys in Russia. Check out this, uh, uh, or ask Mr. Jeffrey Sachs, who was a participant on that, who destroyed this uh, microelectronics uh, 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 manufacturing in Soviet Union and immediate uh, post-Soviet Russia. But it's all coming back, and that's what many people do not understand. And when you look at uh, what people, for example, talk about to, here it is. And, for example, many people have to really get to the facts, to recognize the faces, so to speak. For example, multi-profile Russian IT company Citronix Group, already from 2012, uh, <coughs> produces chips of the 90 uh, nanometers, and since uh, last year they started the serial production of the 60 nanometers. Yes, this is topology which is crucial for the military guys. <coughs> Now, Angstrom T, it uh, started to produce the modern integral, uh, integral schemes. If you look at the I.O., uh, the, which is the uh, um, <coughs> shareholders uh, uh, company of Micron, famous Mac Micron, it produces more than 4 billion uh, integrated uh, chips, uh, micro, uh, you know, uh, chips uh, annually. And so you begin to look at this and... <coughs> If you look to that uh, uh, below this uh, 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 screenshot, uh, yeah, the task is that topology norms uh, of 28 nanometers, 14 to, and 12 nanometers fairly soon, and um, basically in the end it's five nanometers. And in terms of the things like um, signal processing. Uh, cruise missiles and things of this nature, you basically become completely independent. And A is already stated, unlike in commercial uh, uh, <coughs> production, Russia militarily is already fully independent from Western production. And again, uh, the same is going on right now with Russification, for example, of Russian planes like MS-21 and uh, Sukhoi Superjet, which will have a complete, uh, completely Russian avionics and most of the systems, electronically-wise. Otherwise, which is other complex level of engineering, they already have it, from engines to FADAC, you know, full authority, digital <coughs> engine control and things of this nature, so they are already Russian. 
but of course this affects which nobody in the top and all those advisors who work in all kinds of those eco economists and media fraudulent organization want to know because they don't know the you know they don't have basic skills to recognize it they don't want to report it because obviously it <clears throat> goes uh, totally co contradictory to their narrative but when people begin to say as NYT and begin to look at say uh, things uh, about uh, Russian cruise missiles and they begin to uh, say huh, Russia was supposed to run out of them like who knows what now the new new shtick now since yesterday is the fact that oh Russia uses you know KH-555 missiles which are nuclear missiles I have a news for morons from the American media and most of them are morons they are liars horse whatever physical horse too anyway so and the point is any missile, any modern cruise missile is capable of dual use. For example, legendary 3M14 caliber of Russia, it can fly with the 450 kilogram of the conventional warhead. And then, of course, it can fly with the, you know, around 150 to 100 kiloton uh, um, nuclear warhead. All of them like that. Tomahawk was like this. I'm sorry guys, so yeah, it that makes no difference with the key propagandists who basically occupied and corrupted everything there is now in uh, US media, well, with their obviously consent, uh, and uh, they talk about this bullshit and people continue to pretend that, oh my god, there's something like, something special, no, nothing special about it, uh, anti-shipping, uh, anti-shipping uh, P-800 uh, <clears throat> Onyx, or good old P-700 Granite, they were capable and still are both in conventional and nuclear versions. I mean, I'm sorry, people, when this bullshit begins to spill into their media, you begin to understand how desperate they are. And of course they are, because they were supposed to, Russians were supposed to run out of their new, uh, missiles, you know, and make no mistakes. X555 missile is actually three and a half thousand kilometers range high precision missile. It's with the, you know, serious, uh, uh, you know, navigation complex and the serious updates from, you know, GLONASS. It can use GPS if need be, but it can do GLONASS. So, and when you look at this, you look at X-101 cruise missile, which is air-launched. X-555 is also air-launched. And X-101, which is now, say, five, five and a half thousand plus <coughs> range with the uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, you know algorithms and things of this nature so like uh, yeah guys uh, Russia has no it, it Russia doesn't have hundreds of them Russia had thousands of them and uh, even when you begin to go through the what is called OSINT it's not OSINT just read the freaking uh, newspapers <clears throat> and open uh, sources and hear why they are so stupid trying to press this bullshit about microchips and the number of Russian missiles, standoff missiles. Look at this. In 2018, <clears throat> this is TAS, my guys, no less than TAS. We have this. Chief of the General Staff, Mr. Uh, you see the underscored, line, uh, underscored uh, with the red, 24th March 2018. So Mr. Grasimov here sta says, already then, this is four and a half years ago, that every strategic direction, the groupings of the carriers of the, uh, basically, um, cruise missiles of the long range, both of the air and <coughs> naval, uh, uh, naval basing, which are capable to conduct the all kinds of the containment with the strategically important areas that's what Gerasimov said so for anybody who have a uh, IQ or above room temperature this is not uh, this is not uh, referring to the US media let alone British media and their advisors they are practically morons including many of those American generals who spew BS Constantly. No, they already should have stayed. Oh, hmm, four and a half uh, years ago. Well, let me show you other facts. Let me show you other facts. Here are those wonderful little thingies, which is called Project 21631, which are, of course, those famous uh, little ships, which 
are called missile ships, each of them having eight cells of the UKSK 3S-14, which are capable of carrying Onyx 3M-14. Yes, this caliber with the range of 2,500 kilometers. And look at this. The first of them was completed and transferred to the Navy, the, the Caspian Flotilla, in 2013. The other one also was 2013. Then you go down this list and there is 2014, 2015, and I will explain to you why it is important. Then we have to take a look at this thing. <clears throat> this is Admiral Grigorovich, one of the 11356 project frigates, which have also all those eight UKSKs, not the large number of other cells are actually steel anti-air defense, <clears throat> air defense missiles. Russia had already three of them. And this is already, we're talking about like 2013, 2014. Then look at this, this is the Dagestan, this wonderful ship which also struck in 2015 uh, targets of the uh, um, Islamic State in Syria from Caspian Sea. If you look at, uh, attentively in front, eight cells of 3S-14 vertical launch system. And this one was actually commissioned in 2011. Let's continue with the list, showing how stupid and how morons those people are who pretend that Russia should run out of uh, cruise missiles. Let's take a look. This is the list of the project <coughs> improved kilo class, project 636 of the Russian diesel missile submarines. They carry, all of them can carry between four and six calibers in different configurations, be it anti-shipping or, as you can see yourself, one of them shooting six missiles within six seconds, which are hitting their uh, um, uh, Islamic State targets in Syria. About five years ago, look when they have been commissioned. 2014, 2014, 2015, and you go on down, 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 and <clears throat> then, of course, um, when you look at this thing, that's another thing, and this is uh, Project 22800, first one commissioned in 2015. Russia have them planned, 12 of them are already been under construction, and if you put together <clears throat> with the Buyan class, beautiful uh, little thing as well. They're not that little. They're more than 1,000 tons of displacement. You have already 30 of them. I believe 20 of them are already operational. 10 of them are uh, 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 being completed. So, okay, let's uh, calculate. Let's calculate. Each of them have eight cells. Okay, 30. 30 times eight, 240, right? So we have three Grigorovich, it's uh, 24. Then you get those tens now, actually, 636, which is another 40. So all in all, when you get to just those things, just those things, and you get the first salva, you get, when you put together all those carriers, you get about 400 uh, uh, missiles for salva, for, for uh, land attack 3M14. Okay, 400. Well, that's pretty much covers pretty much all missiles Russia already used. But then you go into the uh, other issues such as X-101, X-555, Russia, I believe, inherited something like 600 of the old X-55s, which when modernized for the uh, basically guidance systems become as effective as X-555. So you look at about probably 1500 at least in the first salva, and that is the issue. People who think that you create platform without weapon for it, such as the ships and submarines, and only part of them, I already stated to you, without the weapon being ready, I have a bridge to sell you. So, my friends, the Caliber 3M14 in different variations have been in production since 2005, 17 years. So... Count yourself how many just of those missiles Russia produced. And that is why people cannot, you know, rub their brains around this. Obviously, they are being modified. They get better guidance. But caliber alone, caliber alone, 3M14, land attack version. There is also anti-shipping version, 3M54. But land attack version of caliber alone could be counted in more than 
my uh, very conservative estimate will be around uh, 15, 1600 missiles at the start of the war with Ukraine. Then you have thousands of other missiles. And then you have, you have now, which by the way, news today, all missile forces of Russia are now completely armed. No, there are no old Tochkas, no old those old Okai and whatever. All Iskanders, including their uh, cruise missile versions. These are another, probably <laughs> around thousand missiles, because nobody uh, makes one run. Everybody does their basically calculations for the first salvo, second salvo, third salvo. In other words, you don't shoot, for example, those 400 calibers at once, and then you're left with nothing. This is not how it works, my friends. You have several redundancies already in supply, in arsenals of those things. And that is why when you read this bullshit from uh, media and this crap about that Russians should uh, run out of cruise missiles, I have a bridge to sell you. Russia is not going to run of those missiles. And now with the well-known fact of Russian military industry and some civilian, many civilian uh, industries working 24 seven, three shifts each day, no uh, weekends and all that. Well, make your own conclusion. To what degree, to what level of the sewer all these analytics in Pentagon, high level analytics or CIA or somewhere fell to? because it's ridiculous. They absolutely lost the ability to recognize the facts, not to mention the fact, which I already on the record for many years now, that in terms of missile technologies, especially standoff weapons, United States is nowhere near Russia. It's not even uh, basically fair to compare, let alone that, yeah, check out the news. Uh, a few days ago, uh, well, actually, Two weeks, actually, I think Russia also uh, signed a minister of defense signed additional uh, um, um, contract for the new Zircon missiles. How many Zircons Russia have? Um, OK, let me go out on a limp at this stage, probably 150. It's more than enough to sink all U.S. Navy from the distance of two and a half thousand kilometers. So that's what I wanted to tell you today. And that is why uh, whenever people try to uh, read this garbage, I mean, uh, US, uh, US uh, media are garbage, it's trash, both in human terms, because no normal people with any consciousness will work there because it's going to be self-humiliation and losing any kind of the last, you know, vestiges of integrity and all those, not all, but most of those uh, military experts who are not experts at all. They're just media personalities, including all those generals who are basically looking with the huge professional envy at what Russia is doing right now in Ukraine and elsewhere. And this is what I wanted to tell you today, obviously, trying not to give you the normal calm uh, weekend, but here it is, guys. Those who like uh, what I do, uh, please uh, subscribe to me and support me on Patreon and, uh, you know, whatever the other thing is. So, and have a nice weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.